Hi, I'm Steven Schaefer. And I'm Morse Laureate. And uh, we built a universal Morse code converter. So, first of all, you might be asking, you know, hey, Morse code is an old language. <laughs> so, actually, that last cough, he did one long cough, a short cough, and then three long coughs. So, we can check them real quick. <coughs> long cough, short cough, uh, O would be long cough, long cough, long cough, and T, I think it's just long. So, he did actually cough, not. <laughs> But, okay, so first of all, our system, um, the requirements were, um, we used the Nexus 2 board, obviously, and we were going to input a signal from the keyboard, and it'll output the signal on the keyboard, what key you press, and then it'll put its um, Morse code conversions in dots and dashes. So, uh, I'll go over the block diagram. This is the, the hard block diagram. Basically the same thing with the GPIO for the, for the uh, LCD, and the, the only thing we did is we used a timer to set how long to catch the duration of a, of a dot or a dash and a space. Basically a dot is one period, a dash is three, three periods, and a space is one period. So we uh, next thing we also, we, when we integrated the keyboard, we used the, the, the UR light. The UR light, it's, it's pretty simple to use. We just pull the, the status register on the UR light. And, and, when it, and when it's set to a 1, that means there's valid data inside the memory of the keyboard, so we pull that the information, the scan code off of that, and that's how, and then we, we uh, convert it to something we can use. Um, and then after that, it's just, the speakers just all run off of the timer. Right, and our software flow chart, um, when you start it up, um, It'll, like, it'll initiate and it'll be in standby mode, which literally it'll just say word on the LCD and it'll be waiting for you to input a letter or multiple letters. Um, and then once you um, hit the enter, which is the keyboard interrupt, it'll output it on the LCD for speakers. Is that on? Um, I guess here are the parts we used. Um, the Nexus 2 board, obviously. Um, we keyboard. Used, yeah, go ahead. Keep it. The keyboard the keyboard uses a URL light, so you hit the interface. And uh, we use a DAC which uses the SPI to put out a uh, frequency, which can be converted to a sound. So you want to go to the first problem? Okay, one, one, one big problem we had is memory. Uh, we have our, 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 our memory was set to 8K from all the other projects. And I, we quickly uh, overran that. We were trying, I was trying to do a bunch of matrices, uh, just through just two-dimensional arrays. And it just it would not want to print out the stuff on there more than we call it the function more than three times, but the program wouldn't even work on, on the FGA because it would just override itself and it would just crash. So uh, what I did was uh, what we did is several times we had to increment the amount of memory the the, the, the microblaze has to accommodate for that. Uh, we still ran into problems about with that because when I was trying to do uh, like I said double uh, two dimensional arrays. Uh, Xilinx, the, the, the version we have at least, the C, the C code is very, uh, I guess with the compiler, doesn't like certain things, it's typically done on regular C code. On the new one, the 99 version and higher, 1999 version and higher. So that's when we had problems with that. Um, to this point we still had, we had to work around that because of the, the limitations of microblades itself. Did you go to 16? Uh, we went to 32, 32K. And so we still, I mean, we can do all our stuff except using our, um, <coughs> some of the, the, the neat stuff I was trying to do with the uh, multi-dimensional arrays. Um, what else we have? Right, and our second problem, real briefly, because we're running short on time. Um, when you, for a keyboard, it outputs um, multiple signals. You know, you press A, it sends a signal that you um, sent an A. If you wait a second and keep holding A, it'll keep sending multiple A's. Um, that wasn't necessarily a problem. Our problem was when you let go, it sends this. Um, signal is uh, 0x f0, um, and then it will send your A again after you have let go. And um, so one of our tr troubleshootings we had was we, everything was getting done double and we couldn't figure out why until we realized this. Um, so our first approach at fixing it was our system would read this A and when we got to this f0, we would um, turn off our system or like stop the reading so that this A would get nullified and the next key you press also gets nullified, so this B wouldn't show up either, until you get to the next F0, it would re-enable it, and then the B itself that follows it would actually show. 
So, um, whereas, you know, if you press A and B without doing that, you get two A's and two B's. Now you get the A disabled, and then you get a B from letting go. So, um, that, that was our first attempt. It made sense in our heads when we did it in practicality. For some reason, when we get to here, we, it wouldn't re-enable when we got to the zero if not. So, um, we ended up doing a workaround where we just did a lot of if statements, declared A as a previous variable. If it received another previous variable, it wouldn't do it um, until it got a B. So, through a series of if statements, it, it worked. But yeah, so let's go on demo now. Or actually, questions. So. I have questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you wanted to, if you wanted to do a double letter like two A's, could you do that with the, the if statement way that you did? It? Um, not currently. We we're still working around on that. So um, that's why we wanted to go with this route um, with disable and re-enable. But for some reason, it just would stay disabled. Yep. Yeah. The questions. Okay. You good? Type something in there. Push enter. It tells you what the what you entered, and it's going to convert it all into Morse code there. So and it takes a while, and and then on here it shows it's what the audio wave. Would be, but would be out. The frequency is too slow to make. Yeah. The, the one problem we had is that because of the way we set up the the arrays, it it pulls the information way too slow, so our, our noise is very slow. So that, so let me unhook this, and it won't even make a sound. <laughs> so let's say. Uh, it, it's, it won't make a sound, but you can see right here what it, because it, what's happening is, oh, I took it off again. Our, our waves are very, very small, so you can't hear them. Uh, part of that is due by the, from the speaker, that it just it has a lot of impedance in it, and so the current goes down. But what, hap but we, what we can do is just type in a word, type it in. It tells you okay. Push en once you push enter, it uh, it uh, it takes you to a mode where it just says okay, this you entered this, and now the Morse code equivalent is this. And so we also have other features like uh, if you have if you have pu if you push nothing in there, and you push enter. Oh, oh. this is the. Yeah, I'll say I'll say no data. So push enter, no data, nothing's been entered. So the shift key, we're not using the shift key because really in Morse code we didn't see anything that had uh, capitals. So we just put coming soon in case you wanted to do some other features with the shift key. And, the, and then the backspace just clears what you've entered. Yeah, you can clear out a few. There you go. Any questions? Okay, still in the hand. <laughs>